Now I'd like to talk to you about how you can handle the different kinds of uh, structure differences and especially when it comes down to slines or situations in which your opponent could basically deviate or if he forces you to deviate from going in the conventional ways. So let's talk about a game that was played between two grandmasters, Gratchov and Lalic, in the Croatian Championship in Sibernik 2011. Now, after the moves of c4, knight f6, knight c3, and e5, white played knight to the f3, which is nice. And after that, black did knight c6, e4. Now, we could see that this is not exactly the Botvinnik variation out there. Um, so, um, what we're realizing is that we got this. Uh, now, white is going to be able to play with the move of uh, probably bishop to the e2. And, um, you know, uh, in fact... Actually, we can understand that there's going to be bishop to the e2, short castles, and uh, there's plenty of you know good things that white can actually go ahead go ahead with. After that, black played bishop to the c5, and thing is, white plays knight xd5. A very interesting move on breaking through the center, giving white a brilliant shot against black's position. Knight takes d5, then black does knight takes to the e5. And then, of course, the move of, um, you know, like, say, the pawn to the d4. And then we understand suddenly why that sort of experiment that Black attempted really does not end up too well for him, because in the end of the day, White is the one who controls the middle. He pushes Black down with his last move, and then essentially we see that Black's got a move with the bishop, and then there's d to the that comes out as, um, you know, like, I wouldn't say necessarily horrible, but really, you know, sort of difficult in this position for him. Knight x d4, queen f3. Remember that in this opening, you'll always be, um, you know, uh, better prepared. Uh, so, like, um, it's actually one of the things that, um, <clears throat> you know, you can consider is, first and foremost, you get the chance to step up. You have the opportunity to advance to attack. And more importantly, we have the way to uh, maybe go for bishop to f4 and other things, which is excellent. Step by step, let's get the pieces going and let's control everything. So, uh, in fact, actually, after that type of a position, we have everything in line. Possibilities are good. And, uh, you know, after queen f3, d5 and bishop to the e2. So, also, um, you know, the other interesting part of this, which I really like, by the way, is how white is able to set it forward. So, it's, it's a pretty interesting thing. So, white has this easy development, so to speak, point. It's a very easy way to follow. Now, essentially, black plays with a move of short castles. White can do the same thing in that position. And, uh, you know, we also realize that there could be moves like rook to the d1, it could be pressure against the d5. There could be activity in there. And so I like this quite a bit. So actually black played uh, exchange, fakes, here. And ultimately after that type of move, then you continued with the move of bishop to the f4. Then black continued with that move of f6. You see, white really sets up a lot of value. I mean, most of his pieces are wonderful and well-placed. He has a lot of power with each piece, and much of it comes from the strength and, and the development in this case. So this is quite a bit, quite valuable. Then, ultimately, after that type of a move, um, you know, like, actually, after that, it's black played with f takes to the e, queen takes to the e4, rook takes to the f, and uh, uh, after this type of a move, then we can continue with the move of queen to the e3. Then we can have that opportunity to follow up with. So we have that uh, shot of bishop to d3. There is the move of rook to the e1 and everything. And then we can have the, uh, the wonderful idea of really being able to develop, actually, in this case. And... Um, you know, it's pretty strong at this point, so it's it's good. It's a good thing, and uh, quite quite decent. Queen to the d6, and uh, let's see. Uh, in fact, after continuing with the move of... Um, <clears throat> so just after that, let's see what actually comes out in this case. 
c4 uh, b6 and then there's the move of rook to the c1 in that moment have a great development nice shot and, and possibly coming up with a move of uh, c5 and things are easy what is so interesting about this position is that white has this amazing awesome flexibility out there and uh, yeah this is great so uh, it's good to see uh, in this type of position uh, how the the con you know the continuation works so we can have a c5 in case of b to the c then you can have queen to the c5 as an idea and block is in i mean i don't know if he's going to be in trouble necessarily but you see how much under underdeveloped he feels in comparison to white and uh, you know just the way how it all looks it's pretty good so let's take a look and see what happened so after that type of move what happened um then is bishop b7 bishop f3 this side doesn't have to do so much with the opening stage it has to do more like with the with the development out there uh and so we can have pressure on e5 more possibility out there and uh, so this is quite interesting get those pieces right up make sure that you set everything together and it looks great it really does it's the variation the continuation of pieces and uh, yes so it's brilliant um now s stepping up black played black made the blunder but he already was predisposed so to speak and uh, of course White captured, he took back, he moved the rook, and then he continues really getting, uh, you know, getting all those pieces like the rook on c7 and everything that comes up with, uh, you know, beautifully. So everything is great. Just get those pieces on, set them through, and move against the opponent efficiently. That's all there is to that, really. This, this, there's, that's all there is to the plan. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, shooting up with the with the idea with those rooks and everything as it is. Black obviously has much to be concerned about. He doesn't have many options and uh, he's in trouble. It's great. Bishop to the d5. Then there is the continuation of, of bishop takes the d, rook takes the d7. And it all felt wonderful. Great setup. H3. Of course opens a little flight square for the king and uh, it, it you know brings the possibilities in place so it's uh, white wins but what I like about this is to see how a very interesting exchange really led to uh, you know to this to this attack it was beautiful it was great to see wonderful as, as a possibility and uh, you know that's it just worked out as a great great variation and it worked out, uh, you know, beautifully. So, okay, and um, <clears throat> so this is the main idea. Now let's take a look at a couple of other versions on how that. Here's a game that was played between Vasily Ivanchuk himself versus uh, Sergei Karyakin. So we're talking about two tops. Like, you know, it's very interesting. Let's take a look and see what um, what happened. Basically, after the moves of c4, e5. Knight c3, knight f6, and this move. Okay, just as it worked. Now, basically, black played with knight to the c6, and then actually the variation was e3, should be for queen c2. Yes, development was definitely perfectly well placed. Most of black's pieces feel a little down and a little behind as it comes to his own uh, uh, development. And of course, we have that chance to think about maybe bishop e2. Then we can have the uh, opportunity to castle out there and make things work. So why not? It looks like a good sequence. Things do not feel too bad. Not at all. So, it's great. What happened? Well, after queen c2, black actually decided to play alongside this move. And so, as a result, of course, there was queen next to the c3. And it is pretty. With that in mind, we realize there is going to be a move of uh, short castles. There's going to be bishop e2 short castles, but there's going to be the move of uh, uh, d4. And, yeah, it's pretty strong. Good as a sequence. Nice as a follow-up add there. And, uh, okay, great. What comes next? Well, truth is, position is awesome. 
Black played queen to the e7, and then white played a3, d5, d4. Structure must always be flexible, but one of the things that you really want to do in a position just like that is expand, get ready, improve your pieces so that they can become the most valuable thing you need. And this is this is what it is. Right now we have space, we got you know opportunities, resources, black exchange takes. The bishop pair is a great advantage, which is really why black should have actually given it away in this case, and uh, uh, that's pretty important. And of course, after that type of a move, then uh, essentially after the move of knight x to the d, knight x to the d, and uh, so, uh, you know, that's very important. We get the bishop pair, maybe white can play with the move of b4 and bishop to the b2, and uh, yes, let's take a look. What happens in the game next move? After this, uh, after continuing with the move of uh, c5, queen h4, bishop e6, c takes to the d, queen takes d7, and now we have an end game. In fact, I don't want to spend so much time, uh, you know, in that position of, 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 you know, the sequence and everything. But uh, I think white has had just a super successful type of opening. He ends up with a bishop pair with an opportunity to castle. To think about you know that bishop coming through to d2 and c3, and uh, that's about it. We really do not need more things that will come out differently in this position. All we need is a way to set out the pieces, get them the way they need to be, and afterwards we can have rook d1 and bishop to the c3 and just anything in that type of position. Um, so that's very interesting. Okay, in fact, uh, let's take a look and see with, with bishop to the d7, and there's bishop e2 here, and then there is the move of e4 here, 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 and actually after that move. And so, uh, you know, actually what black happens to play is the move of bishop rook c8, there is the move of um, rook to the c1. We have a great resource. A really nice idea to attack against the opponent, actually on the c5 pawn, and it's a beautiful sequence. Little by little, this is really turning into something great. Black plays b b6, and of course we play bishop a6. I don't want to spend too much time really going through this because it is apparently much better for white. This is clearly why it's clear why as to why this is so much better and everything. But um, I, you know, I still wanted to show you this. And so now let's take a look at a couple other ideas that can happen when your opponent goes for e5. So basically, the uh, now in this next game, I want to show you uh, a very interesting idea. Sometimes people can play the c5 variation, although this is a slightly different line. It's different. I mean, so essentially, he can play with the move of pawn up to the e5. It's very important. Now, what goes when people do play the move of pawn up to the e5? Actually. When he does that, when is that? When he does that kind of a move, perfectly. What we'd like to do is to play with the move of knight of the d5, and um, okay. So we understand that there is the chance, the shot to play for a move of rook to the d6 in that type of position, and uh, you know. So this is a great way to play with the move of knight of the d6, and uh, in, in fact, that that is a perfect possibility to follow up with. And, um, you know, then we have the opportunity to follow up in, in this type of position to set the, the, the forces up in the attacking opportunities. And it's great. Knight b5, d5, c to the d in this case. Black plays bishop to the c5. And, uh, yeah, so this is a great thing, as a matter of fact. After continuing with the move of uh, um, bishop c5, knight c3. Now, see... Black almost always feels underprepared. He almost always feels underdeveloped, and this is a very big pain in that in that kind of a position, actually, because he doesn't know what to do. Just uh, uh, you know, he has no good resources. That is an actual problem out there, and um, so this is uh, you know like just i think that i think that this was the major uh, like difficulty for him in that moment and uh, so let's take a look at this so um yeah now after continuing with the move of uh, a knight c3 castles e3 
So let's, in fact, actually one of the critical things in this type of position is first and foremost, let's get the let's get the pieces ready. You can think about the possibility to play with the move of bishop to the e2, short castles, and yes, white has a good game. Well, black played e4 anyway. Um, so what do we do? I would usually say that in this position there is not a whole lot that you can do. It's not a bad position, but obviously with that pawn out there, black is currently cutting on some of our pieces and good squares and things like that, so that could turn out into a problem. But again, I don't think that this is all too bad. Once, once more time, we realize the value being is that you could open almost at any point with white and you will likely be very successful due to the fact that you have the preparation, you have the, uh, you know, the control, and you can do, you have the space. Especially the space is of an incredible value in those kind of positions. If you have more space, it will help you greatly. And so, that's important. So, d4, c6, d4, e5. Now, this is the kind of approach we could use. But let's talk a little bit more about um, how different black can try to approach that kind of position so what other ways does he have it's not like that that he that he does have to go this way it's just that he's got a couple of different versions what i want to show you right now is a really interesting sort of game that very well illustrates the different things that black could attempt c4 e5 early then g6 d6 and h5 you don't get to see that so often. In fact, we don't even get to see that at all, as a matter of fact. But it is pretty interesting. What do you do when your opponent plays like that? Like, John jumps in with a pawn, sets up some sort of a challenge or attack and everything. Um, so what do we do? Um, you know, one of the keys is not panic. Just make a, qu a quiet move. Now, white played d4. But I think it should have played h3 or h4 to just make sure that things are safe. Not a pos not not a dangerous possibility. Like we could we could make it work, and then after that type of a move, um, then we can have that uh, option to put the pink about pawn up to the d4 out there, and uh, this would be this would be a great great thing. We can stabilize, have everything, and uh, you know we could think of that we can think of a way to. Uh, probably deliver moves like Knight of the D5 out there and some other candidates. D4 felt a little too risky in this type of position and uh, yes. So I just think that if your opponent intends to do something like this, you better t you should better take on the possibility to prevent him, maybe by cutting off some of the right squares and then you can go with D4 very easily. It doesn't have to be just that quick. I think the problem was that Y just did it a little too fast takes here and uh, okay so after the exchanging ultimately black played with 97 92 so you want to be able to play with the move of pawn up to the d4 out there uh, but you know okay after you continue with the move of uh, rook e1 uh, let's see what happens in the game after that so um uh, so like this is this is quite interesting let's take a look uh, this this is now after the knight d e2 pawned up to the h4 out uh, there and then there was the move of short castles and um yes in fact after continuing with this type of move he can play with a move h takes to the g he could do a move like bishop to the h3 which is going to be really fast and uh, so uh that's not going to be so good actually especially with the tactic out there so uh yeah that's fine it's an interesting way to go he opens up he has the possibility to advance and attack in different ways and it's not great it's just it feels a little hard little difficult to play with what comes next well after short castles black plays h takes to the g h takes to the g and then there is the move of bishop to the h3 he's ready to exchange this because if that actually happens we get to see that the g2 bishop is definitely going to lose and uh you know i i think this is pretty horrible in that case and uh, so like actually after <clears throat> After that type of a position, then 
we could see the biggest problem. Biggest problem is we've allowed black to step forward, create different type of threats out there, and uh, I just don't like it. This is a horrible thing, especially with the tactical things. He's he's making a bishop takes to the age, rook takes to the age. He's getting a uh, really you know strong resource, and then we can understand that it's basically you know quite bad. We're we're basically quite bad here. Not a very very good thinking. Not a great idea here. So what happens next in the game? Um, okay, well after rook takes h3, obviously there was this very nice move of knight to the f4, which I have to say that I like. You know, just push. Obviously pushing away that rook is always a good thinking. And uh, okay, after it was after this was played, black came down with the rook on h7, c5, then bishop takes the c3. So he's actually getting to exchange. We retake, then d takes to the c. And it really did not feel too good. He gets now the possibility to... He can even think about exchanging. He can do different type of things. We don't want to be having a position like that. It's it's not horrible. Just doesn't quite look right, I have to say. Well, uh, anyway, after Dedex of the C5 happened, it's Queen F3, Queen D7, here, and long side castles in this position. He is definitely looking re getting ready for a move like rook to the h8, and he definitely going for the move of, you know, maybe he can think about uh, you know, th those two rooks really being quite powerful. And I mean, you could see why. It's not just like a little bit of an idea. It's a lot of horrible things coming our way pretty quickly and uh, it's bad so what's going on in this case actually so it is trouble obviously for for whatever reason we have many things to be worried about and uh, okay so let's see next move rook to d1 of course he plays knight e5 joint jumping in directly to it to threaten He's got more tactical things to be worried about. Uh, we've got more tactical things to be worried about. And uh, yes, this is very, very hard to play. Very difficult. And okay, next move. When the when the queen came up, the queen takes the d1, rook takes the d1. And uh, now most of our own forces just feel horribly placed in the position, especially with the king. Not good. Okay, well, it's interesting. It definitely felt okay, but then there's the king g2, knight 7 to c6, b6, and this, you know, it's just... White made a huge mistake that you should never make in this opening. Too early opening without actually thinking carefully about what may be weakening in your position is a strategic mistake you always want to avoid. So that means before you ever start even thinking about should I open it, should I not, ask yourself, does my opponent have any tactical resources or any moves that can probably cause me trouble? The move of h4 that Black had was a serious move. It was a move that could have caused a lot of you know, difficulty towards our position. So we want to avoid it. Yes, so uh, of course, you just just be careful, you know, stay away and keep that in mind, of course. So in this next game, we're going to see two great masters, actually. We're going to take a look at um, a game played between Evgeny Barev and Etienne Bacro, which I think is a beautiful game. Actually, there's lots to, lots to learn from this game. But I'd like to point out some really great ideas about this game. So let's see what it was really about. So what happened? Basically in the game itself, white started off with c4, knight c3, knight f3, g3, and then bishop to the g2. Which actually brings builds up the position towards the center. So there is a, there is a good support now, uh, right around there. And then after that move, here, this one, okay, white castles, black plays this, and then there is this, there is that light little move. Okay, so pink, pinks are actually quite okay at that moment, nothing to worry about. Then after that candidate move, okay, basically black decided to play with after rugby one with a5. 
coming on with a with a nice small move in order to control then okay we have that idea of playing knight to the c3 here h6 so, so we have b4 what is wonderful about the move upon to the b4 is that white actually sets out to a great position on the queen side we're not just talking about him being able to control more space but also being able to set up the rest of the pieces now moves like uh, bishop to the d2 you know b5 possibly queen to the c2 so it's a wonderful position and it's a great set of pieces so step by step what can make it brilliant what about black well black doesn't have that many things in this case but let me take a look after that move then here and a x to the b bishop b6 again it's, it's just a very straightforward plan see all that white wants is to advance on the queen side all the black ones as well just to he doesn't have that many things that, that he would like actually in this position but white certainly looks perfect he's got the ability to control to have more space like we got the e5 that's being challenged at this moment and there is so much more to play with so now black does c6 now this is a kind of a good looking move at first sight it would almost feel like the move of c6 helps black to open up some possibilities and restrict but it's really not that much for example after continuing with the move of c6 white is ready to play with bishop to the a3 he is reaching out ultimately to challenge against the opponent's d6 and that's what we can do develop prepare and get ready we can always play with beatix of the sea we can always open up the lines and have some tactical ideas in this in such kind of position there are always versions to do that okay so this is fine however you do not have to worry too much because after bishop a3 rook e8 and rook to the c1 we can have the move of e3 then knight e1 and so i think that white sort of made a little bit of a mistake here bringing that, that knight back but here is one little advice the fact that the position is closed is actually shielding you very importantly it shields you because during the closed character there is really little to no risk for you at all and that's what we can actually say about this type of position so we have this uh really interesting opportunity we can have that shot maybe against c6 can think of a way to play with the move of uh, exchange taking you know d6 and c6 are perfectly well placed and black is down or behind so it's a great way to go bishop e6 knight c3 d5 bishop takes to the e7 and knight b4 and you see now the value of it all why just constantly keeps building towards the center towards the queen side he doesn't want to look for any huge tactical exchanges let's just keep building and keep pressuring over there now that is going to guarantee you a long-term strong development and a plan forward this is a great way to go for in that case in the end of the day black actually plays alongside with the move of um, you know, knight before ddx to the c we got ddx to the c available coming up next and uh, of course surely this whole idea you know presents itself for white on the area he can play knight d5 see despite a few little mistakes that we're doing the truth is white has a wonderful brilliant form of pieces well set it illustrating uh, you know great tension against the d5 without any sufficient counterplay by black it's not that he doesn't have counterplay he doesn't have a sufficient counterplay which is two different things sufficient means that he's supposed to have something to attack with or do whatever and he doesn't have that at this point which adds more to the problems that you'd be experiencing so pawn takes pawn takes pawn takes knight d5 exchange knight takes and we get a pass pawn by white the rook comes through the other one goes in and white just you know just destroys almost black's position with a couple of moves shortly following a rook to the d6 kills him off so uh, this was a great example 
in in short, putting the pieces just or the resources of white uh, in the right way helped out greatly. So Barev were very successful because he followed up what was really necessary for the queen side to succeed. Now let's take a look at a couple of other examples.